Plataea Victoria, Greece. This busy square is home to one of the calmest places in Athens. The Amartel Center for Refugee Women and Babies, barely noticeable to anyone from the outside. But inside, women can escape the instability of living in refugee camps and temporary accommodations. The situation for the women is isolating, it's very frightening, they're alone, they don't understand the language. Massachusetts native Dee Dee Lee has been working with the international organization Amartel since the 1980s. The organization started providing pre- and postnatal care inside the camps in Athens, but opened this formal center in October 2016. We are an NGO of women managing projects for women and children. The overall scope of it is to, of course, give women a sense of dignity, a sense of autonomy, independence. At Amartel, volunteers work to build a space that meets not only the medical needs of women, but also their psychological needs. For Rahima, a mother of two who declined to give her last name, Amartel provides a peaceful place for her and her children after fleeing Afghanistan. <laughs> That calm is a stark contrast to the conditions in the camps. For new mothers, it, it's really, really awful. Volunteer Leslie Merrill Schick says there's little health care available for women and young children living in the refugee camps. In terms of prenatal care, there is no such thing. Belgian gynecologist Sarah Nussi is based in the city of Thessaloniki, working for Médecins du Monde. Even though NGOs are providing medical care to refugee women, she says it's not the same as a doctor's appointment. And seeing doctors isn't easy because clinics and hospitals are overcrowded. Because of the lack of means, because of the lack of staff, uh, so a very long, um, a very long delay for appointments, um, which is everything makes like which makes everything a bit complicated. And even if they get an appointment, the healthcare system can be intimidating. They go into the hospital. They don't have translators. Uh, if translators go with them, most of the time they are not allowed into the labor or delivery rooms with the woman. Didi Lee hopes women like Rahima can transition into volunteering positions at Amartel. She wants refugee and migrant women to become perinatal assistants. Over time, they would be the ones who would be uh, uh, managing these programs, who would be facilitating them, who would be initiating them. And, Eventually, I could see that we wouldn't even be needed. The center is currently supported entirely by donations from individuals around the world. For about a year, that was enough. But in March, the donations began to slow. Lee says she's not sure if the center can stay open. We're looking at not knowing if we're really going to be viable just a few months down the road. Despite funding concerns, Lee remains hopeful for the center's future. And she has to be. Refugee and migrant women are counting on it. Reporting from Athens, Greece, I'm Ellie Williams.